of holly. Fa la 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 la. Tis the season to be jolly. Fa la 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 la. Don we now our gay apparel. Fa la 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 la. Troll the ancient Yuletide carol. Welcome to this video on the Phalaenopsis winter care from the perspective of somebody that grows them indoors all year round and from someone that doesn't use heat mats or any heating device throughout the winter season. Many reasons why no heaters can be used, humidity is one of them, cost factor is another. So I'm gonna talk you through what I do during the season for our Phalaenopsis orchids. I'm speaking of complex hybrids in general. The reason I am showing you this beautiful opening shot of my hedge is that a little fire that is coming out from behind the hedge and that is a barbecue going on at the neighbors. The smell is divine, it is overwhelming, and it is very distracting. On top of that, <laughs> The neighbors are having a great time, so if you hear any of the jovial ongoings from beyond the hedge, enjoy the sounds of a Spanish barbecue in the winter time. I will probably not be able to filter it out, so yeah, we've got a barbecue going. Right, let's get on to the Phalaenopsis and what I do and how I take care of them with the minimal, minimal intervention regarding what they would really, really prefer. And here they are, some of my monsters, not all of them because they don't all fit on this table. But seeing as I was going through doing their monthly treatments and care, I figured this is a good time, especially tis the season for fowls to be spiking. <laughs> Pun intended. I figured I was going to do the video today. Let's just start right off the bat with temperature. I'm in southern Spain. I do not use heat mats. I do not have a heater on in my grow space, but they live indoors all year round. Now we know that they do love to be warm and their lowest comfort zone temperature is 18 degrees Celsius. But in my case, they have to go down to 15 degrees Celsius ambient air if it gets really, really cold. 15 degrees Celsius is already three degrees below what they would prefer. Plus I have self-watering and LECA which has a natural evaporative cooling effect in the pots. Then I have a differential in my head of three degrees, let's say worst case scenario, bringing the temperature of my pots to 12 degrees Celsius. That is six degrees below what these orchids would prefer. In the past, I have made so many mistakes with these orchids. Finally, I can show you something that is lush, green and beautiful, and it is working. Acclimating them has been a nightmare. Understanding their needs has been a nightmare. For me, these are not easy growers. So seeing what I'm seeing now, four years later, I'm pretty pleased with the result. To protect the roots from these cold temperatures going back to the 12 degrees, what I consider could be in my pot, I make sure that this time of year my reservoirs are not full. I give them a soak. I try to do it every three weeks, but it can be every two weeks depending on how the orchids are performing and how quickly they dry up inside. And when I say dry up inside, I touch my microfiber and if it's still damp, that means there's enough humidity and water reserves left in the pot, so I don't do anything filling the reservoir. Being LECA and self-watering, the LECA should never really dry out. However, being cold temperatures, there shouldn't be any water in the pots either, trying to maintain a fine balance between the cold temperature and making sure that the orchid doesn't dump the roots. A regular soak, every three weeks, depending, goes in and I make sure that I fertilize at 200 parts per million because these orchids are now either pushing leaves or spikes. So they are in active growth. I normally put 300 in, but because everything is a little bit slower this time of year, because of their large structures, I don't want to go too low, but 200 for me is a happy medium and we'll go with that. What I do with my pH this time of year though, is I pH straight at 6.3 pH. 6.3 is like the blitz soak, blitz absorption of nutrients. This is not something that takes time to get the pH right, to get the pH swing up and down. 
because it is a full soak, I fill up the mask almost to the top. I don't want to touch the base of the orchid, but almost to the top. And the idea is that the orchids will soak up every nutrient at that point, at that pH straight away, because after 30 minutes or an hour, I drain the pot. And because of this blitz soak, blitz nutrient absorption, my pH is already at 6.3, the optimal range for nutrient absorption in a balanced spectrum. And then I leave them be. I don't flush them in between. I just leave them be because I can see I have no salt deposit, mineral deposit on the surface of my pots, which gives me a great indication that they are absorbing the 200 parts per million and there is nothing left over. So the point is to keep the leka a little bit on the drier side, if that makes sense, and to protect the roots from being overly exposed to cold. Seeing as they're all doing something, either leaves or spiking, they all get 200 parts per million. There is no individual rhyme or reason. It all happens in one go. Thankfully, that makes winter care really, really easy. I have to be very careful with the pests on my Phalaenopsis this time of year. Mealybugs love happy sap and so does scale. So some of my orchids do ooze a little bit of happy sap on the underside of their leaves, which I make sure to wipe off on a regular basis. This keeps it a little bit under control and it also keeps the bugs away that have nothing to feed off of in nature. Everything is snoozing out there but the temperature indoors is nice and the extra sugars are tempting and they will come and then take over if not kept under control. Throughout the season of 2021, I have treated my Phalaenopsis orchids with garlic alcohol using a paintbrush and literally painting the structures to coat them with the garlic alcohol. The alcohol itself will kill any pests that are there that you can't see. It's about making sure that the garlic acts as a repellent for any mass return of the pests. So my leaf joints get painted, and especially this time of year, I have to paint also my spikes. All the fowls are clean and free of pests, and that is because of the garlic residue on the structures. But I have not painted my spikes, and I can see that some scale are trying to manifest themselves on them, and that's just not going to happen. So pest control is very, very vital at this time of year as well, and garlic alcohol has been my go-to, and it has solved a lot, a lot of headaches and issues. My light levels this time of year are a little higher, but that is because of the angle of the sun. Some of my fowls this time of year will get direct afternoon sun, but it's only for a time period of maybe 30 minutes, 45 minutes, late afternoon. It is a very weak sun and it doesn't do the leaves any harm at all. And it is a blessing that every once in a while they do get some direct light because I get the feeling that I'm growing my fowls a little bit too dark, but when it comes to winter, that grow space lights up because the sun comes all the way inside. As long as it is late afternoon sun or very, very early morning direct sun, there shouldn't be a problem. Having an orchid behind glass of this caliber, the glass will act as a magnifying glass. So mm, I would avoid putting them in direct sun right behind a window. I'd be very careful about that, even if the sun is weaker this time of year, but right behind a window, that heats up really, really quickly and could cause sunburn. So mine are all scooted back a little bit, letting them just get a little bit of the sun through the glass, but tucked away in the back, protected from any magnifying glass effect. What I don't do this time of year is repot. Unfortunately, because in my years of trials and errors with these orchids, I have some that are still in a position that I don't really like. There is nothing to hold them back. They're getting top heavy, they're getting side heavy, and they can be leaning out of the pot by now. But it is not the time of year for me to repot, even though I'm seeing active signs of new roots, etc. The reason I'm not repotting this time of year is because I am not using heat mats and I'm not using a heater and they have to deal with the temperatures that they are in regardless of any supplementation and making it more cozy for them. So I don't want to induce any stress on my Phalaenopsis by repotting this time of year. It can happen that they will abort a spike and what's the point? This is why we grow them. We want to see the blooms. And it is a stress factor to repot an orchid, even though I would repot her in the same setup with the same media. It's still a disturbance, and this is not the time of year to be doing that. There's too much going on. 
So no repotting, but I have candidates that I need to address come 2022 in the summer and they need to be repositioned, they need to be stabilized because one day, if I'm not careful, I'm gonna wake up and one of these is on the floor because of their leaning nature out towards the edge of the pot. Now you may be asking yourself, if you're looking at your Phalaenopsis collection, everybody else's Phalaenopsis are spiking and you're going, why won't mine spike? It is said that a temperature differential needs to be in place to trigger spiking for these complex hybrids. Temperature differentials are all relative and personal to your environment. In my case, my climate does that automatically for me. By November, my temperatures drop radically and by at least 10 degrees, if not 15, and that is the temperature drop done and dusted and mine will either start spiking or not. If you have them indoors, as they are also considered a type of house plant, and you have steady temperatures indoors, without a temperature drop, that means you have the AC on at a similar temperature as you would have your heater on in the winter, there is no temperature drop. So these guys do need a temperature drop to spike. Let's just say in my climate, I don't use an AC either, and my summer temperatures are at 30 degrees Celsius indoors. And then all of a sudden in November, my temperature drops to 20 or even down to 18. That is a marginal drop in temperature and they will spike. So you would need to take that into consideration if you're growing these well, but your Phalaenopsis hybrids are not spiking, is to check your temperature levels. They do need a significant cool down, even if you were to move them to another place that is much, much cooler for at least four to five weeks, and then bring them back into where they normally live in your growth space. Another reason why fowls won't spike is for example, they're using too much energy by growing roots and other leaves. And in my case, I did reposition some of mine earlier in the season of 2021. And these guys are now just settling back into their pots and yeah, they won't be spiking this year. I doubt it very much, which is also fine by me because as long as they're alive, based on my history, do what you need to do, boo. Just grow, stay alive, I'll see you next year. So any disturbance can also be a factor that a complex hybrid will not spike. And to wrap this care video up, I am featuring my Aurora 3.0 and I'm doing that because I am going to just warn you to be vigilant if you are soaking your orchids and be vigilant about the temperature you keep your orchids at and to hopefully now track and trace what this orchid is going to do in the coming weeks. Because Dum Dum here forgot this orchid outside last night with a mask full of nutrient solution at 6.3 pH and the temperatures dropped down to 12 degrees Celsius. That is the minimum temperature I consider I have in my pot when the pot is dry. That is not even the ambient temperature of my grow space. And these are warm growers preferring 18 degrees as the coldest temperature if one were to take that margin. So, yippee-yay-yay. Eight hours out in the cold with the mask full of water, probably about 15 hours of the mask being full of water because I did a fertilizer soak early in the afternoon yesterday and then I promptly forgot it. And I forgot it because it was exactly in this position because I had some gorgeous late afternoon sun and I thought, how nice of it to have a little bit of direct sun for a few minutes. Now, this orchid was successfully transitioned in 2021. I am so pleased that this one is alive and I'm hoping that it will forgive me for forgetting it out here and that it won't decline. This is only the next day. I don't know what's going to happen next, but there you go. Stay vigilant, stay on top of what you're doing and don't forget your orchids in a place where things could go belly up very, very quickly. Fingers crossed, Aurora 3.0 is going to forgive me. We shall monitor and watch. My goodness, you can imagine my reaction when I turned the corner of my patio this morning. Oh dear. Anyway, here we are. That was my big boo-boo of yesterday. Thank you everybody so much for watching. Thank you for your time. I hope that this was of interest, that this was helpful, especially if you don't work with any accessories. And if it's your first winter in LECA and self-watering for complex Phalaenopsis hybrids, then these are all the little things that I have accumulated throughout the past winters where I made mistakes. 
and bingo, I made another massive mistake. But the rest of the pointers, they are valid, including staying vigilant. Have yourselves a beautiful day, everybody, on one condition, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.